All right, this problem we're going to look and see how much work it requires to pump, well, in this case, water out of a tank. All right, so it says a tank has the shape of an inverted circular cone with height 10 meters and base radius 4 meters. It is filled with water to a height of 8 meters. Find the work required to empty the tank by pumping all of the water to the top of the tank and it tells us the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. All right. Okay, so let's, let's draw a picture. All right, so there's our inverted cone. And let's see what all we know about this. Well, we know the radius is 4 meters, okay? We know the height of the cone is 10 meters, and we know that the level of the water, okay, is eight meters. So from there to there is eight meters. So from here to the top would be two. All right. So let's look at this. What's what what's it going to require to pump this water out of the top? Okay. Well, don't look at pumping the entire water just take a little slice of the water and let's let's figure out the work for just that one little slice okay so let's let's go ahead and sketch that in there so here's our slice of water okay there's our slice of water and the thickness of it we will call delta x that's the thickness of the slice and well how high is it to the top of the tank from that slice well that would be well, we don't know we'll call it x x meters so that would mean the distance to the bottom of the tank would be 10 minus x and here this distance from here to the edge we'll call that r that's the radius of that little slice okay so now we have us we have us a picture and i mean this is all it is work is force times distance okay all right so Let's get the force, okay? So we're in kilograms per cubic meter. So to get the force, well, we know that mass is equal to density times volume, okay? And then, once we get the mass of this little slice, we'll need to do what? We'll need to multiply it by what? 9.8 meters per second squared. Acceleration due to gravity since we're in kilograms. Okay? So let's get the mass. And once we get the mass, we multiply it by 9.8. And that will give us the force. Okay, all right, so, well, the density, well, we have that. It says the density of water is a thousand cubic, a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so that's taken care of. Well, we have to multiply that density times the volume. So we need the volume of this little slice. So remember, if you have and I mean look at that little slice all it is is a cylinder it's just not very tall 
okay and so to get the volume of a cylinder well all you really need is the area times the height okay the area of this circle times the height that'll give us the volume of the cylinder all right so to get the volume or to find the area and then multiply it times delta x the height well the area remember that's power squared so we need to know what the radius is okay so we'll come down here well we know that this radius to this height so 4 to 10 is equal to this radius to this height you see that this radius to this height is this radius to this height so that's r over 10 minus x we just use proportions and then when we solve for r we get r equals 2 fifths times 10 minus x so that's the radius of this little slice of water okay so my volume my volume is equal to pi times the radius squared so that's times two-fifths times ten minus x and that's all squared okay and then times what the height you see that so there's my volume so the volume is equal to what is that 4 pi over 25 times 10 minus x squared delta x okay all right so that's my volume well now I need what the mass because I'm going to take the mass which is density times volume multiply it by the acceleration due to gravity and that'll give me my force so the mass that's going to be a thousand times 4 pi over 25 times 10 minus x squared delta x and so I get the mass is equal to and that comes out to 160 pi times 10 minus x squared delta x <clears throat> all right so there's my mass all right so now I can get my force which is F okay so the force is gonna be 9.8 times 160 pi times 10 minus x squared delta x okay so I get the force is and that's going to be 1568 pi times 10 minus x squared delta x okay so there's my force okay that's the force all right so now we can go ahead and find the work we've got the force and then the distance that we're lifting it up is X you see that one little slice we're lifting it up X meters all right so let me go ahead and erase this and I'm going to come back up to the top and all right so the work is going to be force times distance okay so that's 1568 pi times 10 minus x squared delta x and remember delta x is the same thing as dx okay and I'm going to multiply it by the distance I'm pulling that up which is x Okay. Well, remember, this is the work for one little slice of water. Well, I've got a 
bunch of little slices of water that I've got to pull up to the top. So what I can do is this slice, then I have another slice, you know, down here, there's another slice with a width of delta x, another slice with a width of, width of delta x. So what I can do is I can sum all of those up. Okay. Well, look at this. What is the shortest distance? See, I'm going to have a slice up here at the very top. So what's the shortest distance that one of those slices is going to move up? Two meters. And then I have another slice down here at the very bottom. Well, what's the distance that that's going to move up? Ten meters. So I can sum all of these slices from two to ten. So that gives me the integral from two to ten. Okay. All right. And, and there's your work required from pumping all of that water out. All right. So we started out with the work required for one little slice. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to sum all the slices up. Okay, there's an infinite number of slices there. And I'm summing all those up. It's going from two, from two meters to ten meters. Okay. Alright. So let me just rewrite this a little bit. I'm gonna bring all my constants out. Uh, so that's gonna be fifteen sixty-eight pi, two to ten. And that's going to be x times, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't put that in there right, did I? It's all squared there. All right, so then plus x squared dx. Okay, so I'll fold that out. So I get the work is, let's do one more. Let's distribute the x. So that's 2 to 10. That's going to be 100x minus 20x squared plus x cubed dx. Let me get rid of this. And then, you know, we're ready to integrate this thing. So that's 1,568 pi. And then when I integrate that, that's going to be 50x squared minus 20 over 3x cubed plus 1 fourth x to the fourth from 2 to 10. Okay. And then yes, you've got to do all this. Let's see, 1568 pi and this will be 50 times 10 squared minus 20 over 3 times 10 cubed plus 1 fourth times 10 to the fourth minus, and then we plug the 2 in, 50 times 2 squared minus 20 over 3 times 2 cubed plus 1 fourth times 2 to the fourth. And I think I got all that. All right, and then calculate that and once you calculate all that you end up with 1568 pi times 20 48 over 3 and that is three about 3.3, 3.4 million joules. And that's the work required to pump all that water out. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, not, it's not bad. Just remember, when you're doing these work problems, just look at a little slice of it and figure out the work for that force times distance and then you're summing all those little slices up. That's all you're doing. Okay, so I hope this helped. I know this is kind of a long video. Uh, I, I will have another video uh, pumping the water out. Whoop. 
I don't know what happened, but anyway, I have another video pumping water out uh, of a tank, and it will be in pounds and feet. So look for that one. Uh, give me a like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.